Hello everybody, this is Ryan. This is our second YouTube video for um, the analysis and assessment. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about coding and formulas. And we're going to try to work to make meaning of our data that we've been collecting. So there's a couple of documents that I use, and I've shared two of them with you. And I have a third one here that I didn't share with you, but I'm going to point it out first here. And the first one that I work a lot with is this document here. It's from NWA. And it's the norm study, the normative data. And I and I use this a lot, and our teachers use this a lot to kind of see whether our kid not our kids are on track to be making the progress that we would expect. So you can see we use these tables a lot here. So like for reading, uh, we would expect a third grader to be on track if they're scoring about a 188 in the beginning of the year. And if they so then we would expect them to score one about a 198, have a mean score of about 198. The the year. And for math, we'd expect those same third graders to score about 190, and we'd, uh, we'd expect these, those third graders to score about a 203 in the spring. Again, that's typical. It's an average, so um, we're just comparing our students to the typical student nationwide to the average score, and that would be about the middle. So we use this data a lot to help us know whether or not we're on track uh, and our kids are making progress like a typical student should. Another document that we, I use a lot, or we use a lot here in Emporia, is this one. This is one that's actually aligned to our state test. And we got this back in last fall, and they're doing it every year now for us. But if I go down here to page 12, you can read all this if you want to. It's really good. It's really interesting reading and how they do these studies. But when we go through this, it really when we get down to it, uh, it's this table here that we use a lot. And what this talks about, this talks about in order for a student to be college ready, they need to be able to score a 22 or a 24 DCT test once they get to that level. It's typically a junior for us, some sophomores and seniors. But for a fifth grader to be on track to score a 22 in math, they need to score in the fall about a 218 or 217. And in the spring, they need to move that up to a 225. So if they're not scoring that high, then some things need to change. And we need to do some additional interventions. And that's ACT 22. Now, there's also a higher standard, ACT 24. So you can see what, what the difference is there. So a fifth grader to be on track to be able to score a 24 or have the skill base to score a 24 needs to be scoring a 221 in the, in, the, in the fall and about a 229 in the spring. So we use this table a lot to predict uh, whether or not our kids are on track. The last one deals with our college, our Kansas study, our Kansas assessment. Mentioned a little bit ago, that was ECT when we just did. This one's on the Kansas study. And if you read through this one, got page five, uh, you'll see it's actually page six dealing with math, or page five. But you'll see what this one does is this actually aligns our map percentiles to the level they was scored in the assessment. So if a student takes the test in the spring, uh, we would predict that if they score a, a, in the 50 percentile on the map test in the spring, that they're probably going to score in the level one on the assessment. If they score about a 55th percentile, we predict they score a level three. So that's the spring. But if you go down a little further in this, you're going to start seeing tests taken in the fall. So here's math taken in the fall. So you can see in the fall beginning of the year, if I have some third graders who are scoring in the 10th percentile, I know they are probably may they're probably going to score around level one as the assessment. If if they score if I want most of my kids to score at level three, then I know they need to score between the 51st and 87th percentile on the, on the math test to be, to have as an indicator to show whether or not they're ready to score at level three on the assessment. So we use these documents a lot to help us predict and see whether or not we're making progress as, as a kind of early warning symbols. So now let's move over to our spreadsheet. So you'll see here's our spreadsheet that we worked on last time. You'll see that I added some more data to mine, so mine looks very similar to yours. What we're going to do today is we're going to actually add an on grade level status to see are our kids making on, on grade level status in terms of the 50th percentile. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a column. So, I, I highlight that column and I right click and I say insert one left. You can also do it like this if you want to, to insert that column. If you highlight the column and go to insert, up here in the formula, or I say insert column left, just like that, it's really easy. So now we're going to name this column, I'm going to call it OGL status. 
And we're going to assume a very simple formula. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare column I and say if the student's score is a at the, is 50 or more, then we can, they're going to conclude they're on grade level. If it's not 50 or above, we're going to say they're not on grade level. So here's how the formula goes. We're going to say if equals if I2 is greater than equal to 50, then we're going to say a student is on grade level. If it's not greater than equal to 50, we're going to say they're not on grade level. And you'll notice how I use the quotation marks to show what I want my code to be. You'll notice this one's not available. The way I can fix that is an error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to my formula. I'm going to say, if there's an error, so if error, parentheses. So if that's an error, I'm going to say, just do the double quotation mark. Now I got no score, dash, 
Hispanic or Latino. And the reason I put the dash in there is because it is possible to put these together using concatenation, but it's also possible to take things apart. And uh, we may do some of that down the road, but I want you to just, so I, I, I like you to understand how to put something in between. And you can use a dash, a star, a percent symbol, a dollar sign, or whatever. Typically, I pick things that wouldn't show up within my data. So then it'll fill this column down. I'm going to go click on that corner and notice now that I have no score Hispanic Latino, not um, OGL white, OGL white. Right? So you kind of see how that's going to turn out. What we're going to do with this is we'll use some pivot table to kind of analyze some of our data. And this makes it a little bit easier than looking at individual pieces of data. Okay, so let's do this one more time. So let's delete this column and we'll try it one more time. So we're going to combine OGL and ethnicity. So we're going to use the appersent symbol or concatenation. So we're going to go equals equals OGL status. We want to connect that with something, so we use the and symbol, the appersent symbol. And this time I'm going to put a star in between them. And the star would be shift 8. Notice how it's in the parentheses. I'm going to connect that with the ethnicity. And see now I got no score, star, Hispanic Latino. So now you have your data uh, the way it needs to be. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's, it basically covers two things. It covers how to code data, and it gives you some ideas on that using an if-then coding. And it also told you how to combine up fields to make a, a I call it a calculated field, or a field based on two other fields. Uh, it's useful in pivot tables and in analysis, and I also showed you how to get rid of a there. So, again, I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.